Hey guys, Anthony with The Rag Company, and welcome back to another OG tour. Uh, this time around, we are here at Matt's garage. My house. Your house, your actual garage. I think it's 1.4 miles from my studio down the street. Okay, very good. So I'm a homebody. I yeah, live, yeah, yeah. live and work within a few miles. Perfect, yeah, and you got, you got all your creature comforts. So this is gonna be kind of a continuation of the first video. We were there at OGHQ. We went through, we gave you guys a full tour. Fun fact, that video was supposed to be like 20 minutes long. We are like 40 minutes into it. No idea what the final cut's gonna be. Uh, but we had to obviously bring you guys here for this second part to know kind of what he actually has here in your actual garage. So first and foremost, square footage of all this. Uh, I think it's 26 feet deep and 35 feet wide. So whatever that okay. math is, like 800 and something square feet. Oversized so. three car, kind of, right? Correct, correct. Oversized enough for you to open all the doors pretty much yeah. fully. Uh, 11 foot, four inch ceiling, so a little taller ceiling. I didn't design this house, it was here, I bought it. Uh, and it happened to have a really nice garage. It's slightly below grade. And so there's a stem wall. So there's yeah. two steps up into the house. Uh, which gives us the extra height of the ceiling. And the height height's technically good enough for a lift if you wanted to. You probably sure. won't put a lift here because you got one Down one point. Yep, yep. What do you say, eight miles? Yeah, yeah. Something, something like, like that, that away. So uh, no lift, but for the most part, oversized three car, everything that you need, something that you wash in, you spend a lot of time in. Yeah, this is the culmination of my entire life of shopping for cool stuff. This is what I know to this point, and I'm already ready to do the next one, tear it apart and redo it, do it again. There's some unique things in this garage, if you did watch the studio tour that I don't have there, yeah. uh, that we'll show you here when we walk inside. Yeah, let me show you some of the, some of the cool stuff in here. So, thing right in the front door, this is very different. I was showing you this. If you haven't watched the Wash and Talk on the Obsessed Garage channel, you should go check it out. But this is a dual Krenzel setup. Okay. Uh, so we, you know, had, Mike had this idea in his brain. A couple of uh, people had made some comments on the podcast that you should try doing a dual. And so I said, yeah, let's do it. So I made Mike do it for me and it's the greatest thing ever. So a couple of advantages, you get redundancy. So uh -huh. if yeah. one fails, one will always, chances are always be working. We said and this, we said this in, the, in our little wash that it's like a, it's like a jet engine or it's like two jet engines on a jet, right? You have both of them, if one fails, yeah. you, you still get home. The beauty of this though, is they're in, I guess, parallel. You get more than double the output. Okay. We get 4.18 gallons per minute. These do about 1.9 gallons a minute each. Uh, and so we get some some redundancy that comes through uh, from, you know, I guess it it's like, I don't know, pushing the water, it gets the path of least resistance out, yep. becomes a little less restrictive, I guess. Um, but the beauty of having an on-wall system, as you saw when we washed, I don't, I'm not fighting the cord, I'm not fighting the power cord or the, or the, or the hose. Uh, I do have the DI option. This DI system can only support one of them, so I would turn one off if I was gonna do some rinseless washing. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, the system's freaking sweet. No, it's sweet. It's a smooth running machine, right? Because the time here, I mean, for time frame wise people, we did the OG shop tour first, right? We did that, or the OG HQ tour. Then we did our wash. Yeah. And then now we're here doing this. So some of the stuff now I've gotten hands on with, and I can kind of confirm that that thing pumps out some serious water. But we calibrate it via the tip to be a uh, thousand PSI. Mm -hmm. And then I have my stainless shells. Some lessons I've learned is I'd always do T304 stainless. Well, these are T316. So because sometimes your bottles will leach or leak yeah. and you'll end up with a ring yeah. uh, and that etches your stainless. And so 316 won't do that. So it costs quite a bit more, um, almost double the price. But to me, I'm only having three shelves. I'm gonna have these for a long time. Yeah. Uh, you saw the same press all bottles we had. We have blue ones at HQ. These are the clear ones. These are pretty strong. Maybe they're still strong enough to hold pretty much everything you need as far as Yeah, yeah. Go. I mean, they're, uh, I think one side is on drywall anchor, so, okay. you, know, yeah. you know, I'm not gonna hang on them, but. Yeah. And then we put our bucket filler here. So this is a 24 inch bucket filler um, so that I can very easily, you know, fill up my buckets and not have to like get a hose out. This was a big problem in that my uh, my electric panel was here. Yep. Uh, and so... Oh, wait, well, open that up again. Open that up one more time. What? That's pretty, that's pretty sweet with the light, yeah. Not worth the money at all, unless you're okay. solar powered. Okay. Um, I think this cost about 7,500 bucks. Holy crap. You know, yeah. installed. Yeah. Um, so the panel I think is, maybe it was not that much. I think it was 7,500 for two of them. 
So all this is this just a better look? This is a smart panel, you know, and so I can I can access it and monitor my power usage, turn breakers on and off from an app. Um, I did it because I knew it was going to be a centerpiece of the garage. Yeah. I didn't want to spend tens of thousands to have it relocated somewhere else like I did in my last house. Uh, and so I paid the money to have the span put in and it looks pretty. So, you know, was it so glass or like an acrylic, yeah, like yeah. acrylic or something? That's pretty sweet. This, this is the coolest part of the garage right here. This little guy. So this is my vacuum system. We saw the vacuum system at HQ on the wall. This is the in-wall version. So I have 50 feet of hose up on the ceiling. My vacuum is upstairs. And so it's up in the attic. Yeah. You don't hear it. When I'm done, what I do, you've seen this before, right? When you take this and I do this. And it disappears. It's much cooler in person. That's way cool. Awesome, right? That's awesome. Right. That's pretty amazing. I got my foam cannons here. What, what's the what's what's the general cost of that? Um, I think to do a full Idaho system is about fifteen hundred. You know, with with the whole thing. Yeah, yeah it's not crazy. Okay. You know, to do the the stuff that you can do an on wall Idaho hose, which I would never do. I would do the hose reel version on the wall. Um, but if you do in wall, all we do is cut a hole here, cut a hole there. But then you have to have the attic space to run fifty feet of pipe. It has to be fifty feet of PVC so you can run fifty feet of hose. Where is the Where's the stuff land? Uh, the brain is up there in the attic. Okay, so how often do you have to clean it out? Never. Once every couple of years, change the bag. You know? Just dry though, it's not wet. Correct, not okay. wet. Yep, yep. Cool. And then these cabinets here, so these are a custom made top uh, from our friends in Kansas City uh, called Blue Tree Cabinetry. Uh, and they custom make these. We ship them all over the country to people in our garage designs. This is a uh, Rubio mono coat finish on a uh, walnut. Mm -hmm. Really, really cool. Uh, I was looking for, I like the sterile look with subtle hints of, you know, warmth. Yeah, fine, fine finishes, yeah. 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 So this is my style, very, you know, I'm very straight laced, very, you know, white and, and the, the walls are the same yeah. Harbor Gray finish we had at HQ. Uh, and then we tried this matte white uh, Lista cabinet for the first time. Yeah. Um, and uh, so Lista is a fully custom or fully modularly custom. So I can have them build me anything I want. Uh, and so the cabinet array, this is the, these are the cabinets I've dreamt of my whole life. Yeah. I know I should have bigger, better dreams, but I dream about cabinets and lights. Yeah, yeah, uh, and yeah, this, keeps their own. Yeah, this setup is awesome. This of course is where we have our right company towels. Mm. I got a lot to do, a lot of laundry you to do. do. Laundry to do. I like to have 20 of each. Okay. on tap at all times and um, I don't do a lot of polishing detailing I would do that over at HQ but I do like to have like I have the Rufus three inch here in case I needed a spot treat something for some reason most of the work that I would do to a car and I know people think that I don't work on my cars but I do all the darn time um, I do it over at, at HQ down the street yeah no this is sweet I, I like these cabinets I think they're pretty nice so this is my washing yeah. area, and then this would be the tool area. I so show them like this is okay. This is what I like. I have a trash can in my house. I hate. I hate oh, that. Oh, I yeah, hate that I have a can. trash can in my garage. This is expensive real estate, you know, to have this big of a cabinet for trash. I know, but it's nice because it gets it out of sight. Because I got this cheap, you know, whatever it is, Walmart trash can that I have, and it doesn't look very aesthetically pleasing. In so. the corner here, I have the lift for my bikes. I do mountain bike pretty regularly. Uh, and so when I want to bring my bikes down, I would just simply stand on the side here. This is my rack for my truck. And then I can access, grab my bikes. It just gets it up and out of the way instead of on the floor somewhere. Uh, and so this is called the lift. You know, we sell this in the store. This makes it convenient. So you can do- I have a stop. So okay. I don't go above so you that stop. Do a bit of stop. So you do yeah. two bikes on here. Could you do more? Is there ways yeah. to do well, you more? You could just it's as big as your bike rack is, you know, as much as you could fit. I think the capacity is probably 200 pounds. Or so something. this is this is li this is literally just a freaking what's it's just it's just a, uh, what's it called? Uh, yeah. A, this, a this here is this here is Unistrut, yeah. and then that's a cable system, a little engine that he built, yeah. tab built, and then he you know created this system, patented it. And, uh, and then you just take your tow mount or your tow hook mounted uh, bike rack, any bike rack you have, and you put it in the, in the receiver. Uh, and that's you know how, how it works. And so I don't have to store my bike rack somewhere. 
Um, you could do, I mean, one up makes a four bike version. I wouldn't do it here because it would block my door. Yeah. Um, but uh, we've done these where people do four or five of these all over the garage. Pretty and cool. The ceiling height definitely helps yeah. Yeah. with that. You didn't get to see this at HQ, but this is every Milwaukee guy's dream. This is my Milwaukee master collection here. Uh, this is quite nice. I enjoy this. Yeah. So at one point, I bought every single Milwaukee tool when I became a Milwaukee dealer. It took me three years of convincing them, begging them every year at SEMA to give me access to become a dealer. Uh, you make virtually zero money selling, uh, selling Milwaukee tools, so it hasn't really helped me very much. Yeah. Um, but this is a 52-piece set of all the tools that I like the most, and I think that every, you know, every real man should aspire to own. So this is the, the set of tools. I have one battery per tool which is very frivolous, but aspirational. Yeah. So if I have 52 tools, I have 52 batteries, I have the supercharger and then the rapid charger, and um, I'm able to come in here and grab whatever tool I need if I'm doing anything at the house. Yeah. You know, some of it is a little ridiculous that I won't use a whole heck of a lot here. Like, what's your, what's your favorite? Can you, can you give me your, give me your, actually give me like your top two. Um, top two tools, number one tool is the mid torque. Okay. So this will be for lug removal. This is the number one tool that every car guy should have. have that look. Number two tool is the Milwaukee Surge M12. This I, is my second I do, favorite I do you have that one? No. The Surge version? Do you, you sure oh, you have the crap, Surge version? I don't have the Surge version. version. Yeah, you I got the regular version. The, regular. the Surge is more precise, not quite as much torque as the regular. I do think you want both uh, in a perfect world. But if I had to choose one, I'd choose the Surge. Okay. Uh, and then the... Um, um, Let's see what would be my third tool. There really is the third, the rest of the stuff is pretty tied. I mean, this is the tool that every man needs to have. So this would be number three. This is really should be number one. The first tool you buy should be the Milwaukee hammer drill driver, mm -hmm. M18, M18 version. I had to have that one. So I'm on the right path so far. That's maybe, good. In Matt's eyes. That's good. All right, sweet, okay. So then, you know, this is the cabinet array. I think my countertop is 22 feet. Uh, so 22 foot cabinet um, length in the in the width of this thing. Yeah, they're 26 feet, 26 inches deep, yeah. uh, and then you can see we seamed the middle. So I ordered this, and you know the countertop had to be done in two two sections. Uh, this is a product I've been I tested out. I probably won't do it again. It's called Paper Stone. Uh, and actually, I just noticed this is going to drive me berserk. But my Paper Stone just popped loose here. What is it? Is it just? A, it's just. It's a really really hard um, like cardboard almost. Uh, it's dense, uh, it can be sanded, uh, but I wanted to try something a little bit different. Uh, Ooh, and and um, it's designed to be used as countertops, stuff like that. And so I bought it in an eighth inch thick version uh, and use it as a backsplash, you know, just to kind of give a little bit of, you know, a little yeah. different look to the garage. Um, this is a Sony Signature Series. I, I, I dislike LCD, mm -hmm. or what most people know as LED. Yeah. All LEDs are LCD. They just have an LED backlight. Uh, this is Sony Signature Series, and then I have full 5.1 surround in the garage. So, are you? What do you? What are you watching on this? Heartland. Hmm. Yeah. Netflix. <laughs> Netflix. The, no. 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 To be no, honest, can no, I be honest here? Yeah. Yeah. I really don't get the opportunity to watch much because when I'm out here, I'm filming. Yeah. So I have this amazing audio system, and I usually get to use it about 10% of the time I'm out here. But when I am out here, I really value music in two places, the car and the garage. And they're the two worst places to listen to music, but I have my, these are my favorite speakers of all time, you know, Dynaudio Heritage Specials. They only made a you know, few thousand pairs of these. It's my favorite speaker ever. And so I made a system out here just for this. And so you have the center, left, right, the, Two rear surrounds up in the up in the ceiling. There's a Dyn Dyn Audio Studio Series. I'm a, I have a love affair with Dyn Audio. The reason why I love them in the garage or in general, they have a silk dome, traditional silk dome tweeter. Silk dome tweeter isn't harsh, isn't bright, and sounds amazing. It just appeals to me. Okay. Then you have things like tool grid, where I have my drawers organized. People make fun of me because I have too many tape measures. A lot of tape measures, that's a ridiculous amount. You don't need that many and tape measures. And then I do have my Sonic Master Collection as well with um, all the Sonic foam inlays. Uh, so and you then, have this at home too. So you have it at work and correct, you have it at correct. home. I use it a lot less here than I do at home, uh, but I like to have it here. I mean, this is what I do for a living. I probably wouldn't have two sets if this wasn't what I do. Um, but what the heck's going on here? Oh, I was uh, 
my bike the other day. Mm, mm. Sorry, I gotta put. You didn't put away your own tools, but yeah. yeah. I mean, he, guys, he keeps a keeps a pretty clean drawer set. Don't 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 worry. Orange Vice. We didn't talk about it the other place. Um, there's not a lot of uh, marring on here on my vice, but um, this is uh, a uh, vice made in uh, Southern California that um, is made out of a big hunk of aluminum that they they uh, CNC and yep. put together. Super, super cool. I think it's about 900 bucks, 950. So it's a really expensive, but really pretty vice. It looks good. Cool. When you need it, it's great to have. Uh, and then the other thing I did for this garage, I'm six foot two. Uh, and so I did something where these are taller cabinets. Mm -hmm. So the countertop I think is at 44 inches. Yeah. Uh, and then I like to move my cabinets. So the base of the cabinet here is 22 inches from the countertop, which makes it difficult if you're shorter to reach, but I like my cabinets out of the way so I have more countertop, more working space. Oh, I agree. We have our Obsessed Garage Max light, under cabinet lighting. Uh, I have Viper fans in the corner. This has the same lighting. This is the same Cree linear stuff controlled by Lutron, a Lutron Vive, uh, no, Lutron Radio Raw 2 Select system, the Lutron switches uh, in the garage here. We also have a mini split, so I condition the garage and my garage doors are insulated. They were just here with the house or nothing special. They're just like a co-play. Yeah, so everything stays, I mean, it stays pretty temperature controlled in here yep. all the time, yep. which is great. And then you, I mean, so big thing that people are gonna ask, I mean, this is just, so for some people you have a garage that is this, for some people, very few, I'll say, in the grand scheme of things. To me, this is the ultimate setup. Now, I design and build garages for a gosh darn living, so, you know, it makes sense that I would have yeah, something you that's have awesome. To have some, you have to have some to showcase. But for people who have uh, lawn mowers, weed eaters. I have a shed. You have a shed. Yeah. So is that- And a yard that, guy. And a yard guy. Yeah. So would you say, because I got a shed this year, right? Or this last year, best thing I ever did, right? Because that's where all my stuff went. Everything that I had in the garage, that I didn't want to be in the garage, I went to the shed, right? Yep. Now, it's not a perfect system because there's still plenty of things that I have in the garage that I put up in the attic space and things like that. Yeah, that I so I'm, I'm an attic user and I'm willing to do it. And I, you know, I can show you guys the two you know, yeah. unique things that we have in here about attic access. But that would be one answer to your question yeah. is to utilize the attic. So I actually have motorized stairs um, to get up into the attic. Uh-oh. There we go. And I have a motorized lift as well so I can get up into the attic yeah. and these are 11 foot ceilings so you know it's dicey to get in the christmas it's tree pretty, i mean we'll have to get a b-roll shot of it this is i mean it's pretty sick it, it's definitely like a magic trick seeing that all start to come down yeah crazy very cool i did jack shaft door openers as well one of the other things i'd like to do in here is i'd like to do some acoustic treatments um, cause there is quite a bit of echo, you know, for video. Yeah, yeah. And, um, I would also like to do high lift doors when the, when you have the doors open, it's cutting off quite a bit of my lighting. Okay. Uh, and I'd like to have a little bit of better lighting when the doors are open, okay. but you know, and in then, Florida with it being air conditioned, most of the time I, I do things with the door closed. Okay. We didn't talk about it, but Swiss tracks flooring. Yep. Swiss tracks flooring, Cree lighting. Okay. So same kind of similar, you, actually the same that you did in the OGHQ. Flat paint, always flat. Mm -hmm. So flat paint. So it, I mean, obviously this garage, you said, it's basically kind of set up as a showroom. It's so somebody that sells all this stuff. You have to have everything here, right? This is where this is where you're working, you're making videos. But if you could choose, I don't know, let's just say, we did kind of a top three thing in the, on the tools, four things that you absolutely need in this garage out of everything you have in here, four. Um, on wall pressure washer. Okay. Lights. Okay. Some sort of speakers. Okay. Flooring. Okay. And can I have a fifth? Cabinets. Oh, I wasn't going to give you a fifth. You got to do some kind of cabinets, but okay. I mean, this cabinet array is a bit ridiculous. I think, I think retail on this array is like thirty-five yeah. for all of these cabinets. Um, and you know, this is a again, this is a thirty-foot wall, mm -hmm. and then I've got another you know six-foot section. So I got thirty-six linear feet, you know, left to right feet oh, of cabinets. Uh, and so it, you know, it gets, gets pretty expensive, but, um, you know, that, that's, that's excluding the countertops and the TV and the speakers yep. and all that stuff. So I, I want to say to build a garage like this, you're probably somewhere $125,000 to do the ultimate, ultimate setup. Yeah. Not, if, not too bad, right? Not too well, bad. It depends. It's relative. You know, let's say you got a $2 million house and you have an oversized three car garage and you spend a hundred grand for the ultimate, ultimate setup. 
you know, you know, especially if you're not doing lifts and stuff like that. That's lifts can you know add quite a bit to the price too. I think, I think it's obviously a much of a priority thing too, right? I mean, yeah. basically you could, you know, some people who have a two million dollar house, right, and, yeah. and they can afford it. They might go spend a hundred thousand dollars on their backyard, right? Sure. And go yeah. do some crazy features. Three hundred thousand dollars or a pool or something like something that. Something like that. Yeah. But yeah. if the garage is one of their main takeaways, then they can put the money here. Yeah, yeah. So I, you know, we we you know make a lot of sacrifices in other areas of life to have this is the sanctuary. This is where we enter the house. To me, mm -hmm. the rest of the house is just attached to this spot. Yeah, yeah. You know, and actually, the more I think about it, I should add it up. It's probably not that much because I don't have a lift. I don't have an air compressor. I don't have compressor lines. Um, so maybe it's not that much. Maybe I don't know. That, I mean, you don't have one of these. You don't have the magic lift system inside the. HQ, so I think there's probably things to offset it. Yeah, it, it adds up quite a bit. And you also have a, a bunch of fancy bikes in here, which I'm sure offset it a little bit as well. So yeah, who knows? Yeah. To me, it's it's not about what it costs; it's about the function. Yeah. You know, I'm not looking for the most expensive. You can all, you can find more expensive things of pretty much all of this stuff. It's about you know what functions, what fits well together, and you know, to me, putting all of this you know trial and error together in one spot makes me walk into this and makes me happy makes me so i didn't clean up for you guys to come here well, like i didn't do any this. like clean up it just yeah. stays like this technically he was gone he wasn't even here he was at he was at adam lz's place so he really wasn't here right i've been here for a month literally yeah he's i'd have michelle month. take out her pickleball feeder machine um but <laughs> yeah. other than that they you know we keep it we keep it pretty clean here no, and, and the kids enter through you know that door every day yeah no it's it, i mean being here, it's true. I mean, Matt definitely lives this lifestyle. I mean, so it's true, it's true to his word, what you see on, on YouTube and whatnot. I mean, it's it's cool to see everything, it's seeing the functionality of everything, seeing the cabinets and stuff, because I think people watch your videos, right? People, tons of people watch your videos, and they all go, oh, is that for real? Is that for real? Is, that a, is, he, is he really doing that? It's kind of over the top. Does he need to connect two pressure washers together and all of that? Once you start using it, you start to kind of, you start to understand it kind of, it flips a switch and it may not be immediate, like I need to buy this, but it's more like, okay, I kind of get it, if right? If I had the option, would I choose that? And I think pretty much all, if, if the answer was yes to me, it's probably yes to most of us guys, you know? You know, would, if I had the option, would I buy Dyn Audio Heritage Specials mm -hmm. and put them in my garage? If I had the option, I think the answer would be yes. Uh, and that's what I'm hoping to answer with, you know, a garage like this. And then uh, the plan is to build a dedicated indoor wash bay, uh, double the size of this garage next, next to this someday. That's the goal. It was supposed to be starting now, yeah. but I did buy a new uh, warehouse down the street, uh, which will postpone that for many years. <laughs> I'll yeah. tell people. I think I think I think in the long run you'll 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 get you'll get what you're looking for. Should we tell them what car is sitting here and then we can wrap this video up here? I think we should because there are three cars in here and they're all pretty freaking awesome. So um, I guess starting with probably the best one first oh. the, in the fastest one. Oh, the, the one uh, I should yeah. know where you're going. So we yeah. got 2005 Mitsubishi Lancer Evo 8, mm -hmm. right? And uh, I bought it uh, what about six months ago. It was uh, a like it, it was a some guy's collector baby. It had 1,800 or 1,900 miles on it. Original, an original battery, original tires, everything. Yep. Um, and so I've been looking for a car that. Um, let's just say that I didn't like. I wanted to be able to drive. I was looking for a driver, and and yeah. so I didn't get a driver. I got a collector, but I'm going to drive it anyway. Yeah. And then I have my, you know, beloved. This is the car that I love the most. You know, it's the nostalgia car. This is uh, a, a 2013 uh, Interlagos. I prefer Le Mans, but it's Interlagos. It had 900 miles on it original. I bought this last year. Uh, it now has uh, like the Brembo CCM carbon ceramic brake kit. Uh, and uh, it's basically set up the way I would. Have you cracked tracks. a couple thousand miles on it yet? Uh, it's you... 1,900. I know. Okay, I'm almost there. A thousand miles, yeah. Almost and there. And then the Brewster, the Brewster um, GT3 Touring. Yeah. Um, I would have a lot more miles on all of these cars, but uh, we don't need to get into it too much detail. But I've been having a real difficult time driving. Um, and uh, that's a recent thing the last couple of years. That's something I'm working on. It has to do with obsessive compulsive disorder, but the Brewster has about 300 miles on it. I wish it had 3,000. I'm ready to go drive at 3,000 miles, but yeah. I'm trying to get myself on the road. Um, that 
is the first Porsche GT3 that I was able to buy and spec, yeah. paint the sample. Oh, yeah. uh, and so I plan to have that car for a long time. In the driveway, we keep a Rivian and a Raptor. Yeah. So those are the family flex vehicles. And then I have my E36 over at the studio. Yeah, no, sweet. I mean, for what it's worth though too, I mean, you're not gonna be racking up a whole lot of miles when you work a mile and a half away. That's true. Right, yeah. so I mean, Correct. unless you're going to the other side of Florida, a couple times a week it may seem, it may seem like you're not driving a lot but i mean you live pretty close to everything so no this has been awesome matt thank you for having us here i mean being here in the garage that many of you guys watch on youtube is, is a ton of fun uh last time we were here with matt was at the previous house where he had the the whole wash bay and that was an awesome place as well this is definitely what you were probably wanting at that time more of a enclosed, an garage, enclosed garage yeah everything like this and um, it's just as awesome in person as it is in video. So obviously, uh, if you're looking to do this for yourself, you're looking for inspiration, you're looking for ideas, if you're looking to pick up the products that you see here, right, and maybe you want some direction, that's what your website's for, that's what your company's yeah, for. Yeah, I mean, shoot, and we have people come that. visit all the time as well. If you were gonna build a garage like this, it might be worthwhile to jump on a plane, come visit us, mm -hmm. come see the studio, come see, I'll bring you over here, show you the house, you can touch and feel everything. Um, we do, I think we do a couple of hundred garages a year at this point in growing, uh, garages like this, but we do from the, Simple flooring lighting uh, design. Uh, we're you know, we spending a couple thousand dollars all the way up to, you know, as you see this garage that we're doing in California next uh, next month is going to be wild. Yeah. Um, and so Kyle and the team does you know, a garage design cons consultation to show people, you know, how, where to put their outlets and how to wire everything up and and making sure that we can provide you know all the products that can yeah. they can set up the garage the way they've always dreamt. It's a it you're not just selling the products, but you're also selling an experience and knowledge and- It's about uh, the pursuit of functional excellence. That's the tagline. That's, it's a long, it's, I mean, sometimes that tagline, I say it and I go, what am I saying? And then I kind of, oh, okay, I get it, you know. And then get, you use a dual crenzel and you're like, and I, I it, hate yeah. to admit it, but I you're right. I hate to admit it, but you're right. So uh, anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to check out Obsessed Garage on YouTube, check out obsessedgarage.com uh, for inspiration and more products and things like that. Uh, and as always, if you guys love seeing detailing content, shop tours, garage tours, uh, and more, please make sure to give us a big thumbs up, subscribe down below for more, and stay tuned for more videos right here at The Rat Company. See ya. Thank you.